future. Kick it off. Go forward, Bianca. So, yeah, we've been here before, so we, we know all the excitement we've heard about virtual reality, about mixed reality. You're looking at the Sensorama. Uh, I believe this is 1962. Uh, not only did you get a 360 view of everything, but the chair vibrated, smells came out of it, and there was wind to blow your hair, too, which we currently don't have in our VR headsets. So we go to the next slide. Um, this is actually probably the very first mixed reality uh, headset. Uh, and again, this is the early 60s with patents going into the late 50s where this cube was generated over the room. This is called the Sword of Dem Dem Democles, I believe. And if we go to the next slide. Um, some of you may remember the uh, Nintendo Virtual Boy. Uh, hmm. It came out in 1995. I think it was. Yeah, not here. Anybody remember this? Anybody remember this? Oh. Okay, that's good because by 1996 it was no longer being made or sold. Um, however, it is a hot eBay item right now. Point five thousand dollars for one. <laughs> so we go to the next slide. So, um, scanning. Uh, this was the QCAT. I have one still. Um, the, the, the brilliant idea was that we get so excited by our magazine ads, we want to scan them, and then that would load the web page for that extra experience that this company was. I'm sitting at my computer, reading my magazine, and I have the QCAT. <laughs> Sounds like a genius idea. Yes, they're bankrupt. Uh, can we go to the next slide, please? Uh, um, the ubiquitous. 3D code. This was going to take the world by storm here in the United States because it was popular in Japan, and marketers had universally uh, embraced the 3D code, even though consumers wondered what the heck are these things. <laughs> Another failure. Next slide, please. And the last one here. Yes. Yeah, so if we and you click through to the next slide, I think it also brings up, so you guys might rem remember the Amazon Dash. This was another uh, home scanner. The idea was you'd be able to you know, bring your groceries home, scan them, and then it would you know, tell you when you're gonna run out. You could also um, talk to the Amazon Dash. Now the second generation has come out, which maybe will crack the code. But the idea that a consumer is going to scan everything to kind of keep up with their home inventory is just yeah, let's not let's good. add more work to our already busy life. I'm going to scan things at the store and then take them home and scan them again. It's like it just seems brainless to me. But keep going. Next slide. Uh, we're going to pause there. That's what I thought. Okay. Well, now is the time for really brands to really focus on this as a mass market. Um, these technologies, like the PlayStation VR, sold over a million units as of June this year. So we go to the next slide. It isn't just PlayStation VR. You got the Oculus Rift, you got the HTC Vive. They're selling quarter of a million, 300, 400,000 units in those two. If we go to the next slide, um, this is really probably why we think uh, now's the moment. So. Already today, there's 100 million people in America with an iOS device that is capable of advanced augmented reality. The iPhone 8s are shipping, and the iPhone Xs start delivery in two days. So, yeah, so now this to me is exciting, John, because I mean, honestly, the VR stuff, I see a fractured market back there with not a lot of units, even a million units is not very many. 100 million, to me, now that is an exciting number of units. Right, in terms of the doesn't have to do anything. Actually, hit the market. They don't have to download an app, right? The phone itself has the capability built in. So what, we, what I think is gonna happen is, we are gonna expect every brand, every packaged good, uh, anything that physically exists, to have that extra layer of information, of entertainment. Um, and as I said, you're talking about the mass, uh, mass market here in the United States. Gabe, you're like focused specifically on mobile. What, what do you think about this opportunity? Do you, do you see you selling your clients at MC uh, Saatchi to, to break into this AR stuff? I mean, for me, the AR needs to have some sort of um, growth component. How is it going to drive more transactions or drive loyalty? Um, you know, just because this ecosystem now exists, you know, it has to be the right experience with the right fit with the, with the brand and, and, and added value for the, for the customer. And so, like, in my opinion, um, 
if it's like in the retail category, e-commerce, this could be interesting because as, as the stay-at-home economy grows, there's more and more uh, uh, demand and, and expectation from customers to be able to leverage technology like AR to be able to shop just like they would in, in, in the physical store. So like, I feel like um, you know retailers that have brick and mortar could think of this as an advantage to invest in AR so that they can bring e-commerce to the home and still survive and, and vice versa like you know Amazon is building brick and mortar but they can turn the brick and mortar spaces to uh, a digital experience to drive more sales uh, online as well so I think it's important to think about these shifts in behavior. So I, it's interesting so what I'm hearing from you Gabe is like there's a bit of a divergence between what I hear from John and Nala and you whereas like they have a little bit more of like the, crea the creative long con view of this and you're like talking more about like direct awareness, direct sales, and um, I'm not saying either one is right, but that I think that's like a classic uh, issue that we see between media and creative all the time, and like, I, I would hope that there's a way to bring those two things together. Well, in the end, we have to sell, right? But that's a, <laughs> so we have to find a way to work together. Um, you know, I think from our conversations, Gabriel's talking about the stuff that he's implementing right now, I think from a product development or from a creative um, perspective, we're starting to develop these things right now. So they're not gonna hit in a little while. We, we may have to move fast. Um, you know, we're talking about 100 billion devices here, but 30% of search uh, web browsing in 2020 is gonna be off a, without a screen. So we may be designing for screens thinking about screens 2020. right now. It's two years, two years away. We're all getting on fast. Um, but you know, we need to think about. You know, we work on our side of, of the world. Like we work building brands. What do these brands look like when a logo is not important anymore? Right? When there's no colors and fonts for you to rely on. It's going to be voice. It's going to be personality. It's going to be the service that you provide. So there's a lot of impact in how you brand a product, how consumers interact with your brand, which will affect your sales. And in the end, that's what's going to drive it. Yeah, in my opinion, is I'm a growth marketer at heart, so I always, I'm skeptical and think about, you know, from a performance you know, standpoint, how is this technology going to drive more sales and growth? And I feel like if AR, you know, you could do it wrong if it's actually adding more friction to your, to the, to the purchase uh, uh, journey. How do you think it's adding more friction to the purchase, per purchase path? I mean, there's part of it is it's like if you're just using AR and it's not really fully integrated and, 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 and native to your 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 brand's own um, product experience, like it's just a way to say I'm doing it and, and, and get some PR buzz out of it, then that's that's you know that's a different objective. But like if you're truly trying to improve um, the and make it more seamless to 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 purchase something, like in my opinion, you know, aside from AR, I think uh, voice assistance is actually you know the, the new sort of Lower funnel touch point where you know similar to how search is successful, is, you know, uh, voice is actually going to make things more seamless and convenient to to make purchases. Uh, you sound like a bit of a contrarian, Gabe. I mean, I'm, I'm I'm on your side in terms of being skeptical. Um, all these things have not been. I'm, I'm not saying it has to be proven, but you're basic. Yeah. You're basic blocking and tackling kind of guy, and like, and which is which is valuable. I think that most uh, marketers still struggle with those kinds of things. Um, and you two seem to be more. Well, I was going to say, I think he's he's right. We can't add an extra layer into right. it just because it's augmented reality. But Amazon just announced, I think it was today, that all of their furniture, or some of the furniture that it's selling, will now be available through this augmented reality layer. So that takes the friction out. If I'm thinking about this chair, I can actually put it in my living room, see if it fits, see what it looks like with the other furniture that's there. I'm sure I can on Amazon click the uh, button and have that thing. Actually, let's look at a couple of augmented reality examples. Bianca, forward, more connected things than people. Keep going. Next slide. I forgot about all these slides. So this is the LG um, Smart uh, Fridge. This has Alexa built into it. It also has the inside camera. So if you're at the store, you can say, do I really have a jar of mustard in the fridge? And you can look inside your fridge. Um, and it will do expiry tracking, too. Yeah, so this is actually a really interesting thing because remember a few years ago, they were talking about all these Internet of Things that were going to be 
computer and produce like, you have to buy this egg tray that's connected to the internet, and you have to take your eggs out of the carton and put them in the tray. And then somebody realized, hey, why don't we just send the user a picture of what's inside their refrigerator, which is what, and then apply some image uh, recognition to then tell the user what they have, which seems like a much more genius idea than making us buy like 30 doing 50 that. different kinds of sensors. I could be wrong about that, but it, nope. another example of where we thought the future is going to be, not quite so. Uh, next slide. So, yeah, so we, we talked a little bit earlier about the failed scanners and the grocery scanners where the consumer is supposed to rescan and stuff to keep track of it. Um, we heard a lot today about artificial intelligence um, is one of the aspects and the advancements in AI have been extraordinary. The Internet of Things, cameras are getting cheaper, um, and when you combine those with AI where it can identify objects, I think we're getting very, very close to the point where most, consumer, most consumers' uh, product choices, most of their purchase decisions, most consumers don't want to make those, right? No one really gets excited about toilet paper and cat food and am I going to run out of dish detergent. And I think we've seen the success with voice commerce. We're out, we're, just, we're out of time. We've got a minute, 15 second video, then we get 30 second wrap ups for each of you. So let's uh, go to the next slide. Bianca. So this is going to play itself. Next slide. It doesn't crash. AR is actually really similar to Pokemon Go. You have your phone that displays things on your screen that are augmented, meaning they're not real. Augmented reality, out of everything we're going to look at, I think this one is my favorite just because it's so practical. I can't tell you how many times for myself I've been in the real world and I needed a tape measure but I haven't had one. I've wanted to measure something and the tape measure was nowhere to be found. Well now you can use your iPhone and iOS 11 to just move your phone and measure something with a tape measure. That is incredible and whoever thought of that is a It is a portal that you can look at. And it looks like a normal portal, you know, we've probably seen this before, not a big deal, it's not, it's not but you can walk reason. inside. And it takes you to an entirely different location, and mm -hmm. I don't even know what goes into developing this, but just being able to mess around with this. Not something you're gonna use every single day or pull out and be a daily app on your phone. Is this robot thing that is dancing in someone's living room. This you can notice the devices the moving around and shows. somehow yeah, the developer integrated AR awesome. so that the robot isn't moving around, it isn't glitching out. I mean, it looks like there's a real robot dancing around in this person's okay, living room. It that. is insane. So, Thank you. All right, so we're out of time, but I want to go... Relevance. You need to pick what technology is the best for your, your company, uh, for your consumer, and experiment with it a little bit. But, you know, don't go crazy. Be focused. Yeah. Uh, for me, I think it's uh, always think about practicality over novelty. I think um, AI plus AR has some interesting things for um, certain categories. Like if you can try before you buy something and visualize through AI with, as a recommendation engine and see like clothing on yourself, that would be pretty cool. So you can shop from home and actually adds value to your purchase decision making in your daily life. Yeah, and I think you know have those um, valuations in terms of that it's a real thing that can drive your business forward. But then I say um, experiment, prototype, fail, learn, and do it quickly and as cheaply as possible. You just took my summary, John. Um, <laughs> to add to that, that uh, you somewhat convinced me to move forward with this. But one of the things I think uh, the key things because having Gabe in the middle here, I thought was interesting because he's more of the classic blocking and tackling guy, and you guys are more the creative guy. I think that, like the thing that's going to make this successful is relevancy, to your point, uh, the content, and then tying it back to powerful media planning and buying. Uh, and that's all we have for you today. Uh, sorry we couldn't get any questions. Let's give a big round.